the NICD presents a tribute to the progress made to date in the fight against polio. Decades after having contracted the disease, these are some of the survivors that we have followed. My name's Noreen and I am currently in Kloof, Durban. Um, but I spent the first five years of my life in Transgar and after that in Queenstown, Eastern Cape. Well, um, there were two of us when I contracted the disease. My sister only two weeks old. Um, which meant that I had to go into an isolation ward. I contracted the disease in uh, 1956. There was a large epidemic in South Africa, summer of 1956 to 1957. So um, I went into an isolation ward in Mtata for a month to protect my sister, as well as to discover what was wrong with me. They didn't know if it was meningitis or polio. Um, thereafter, I went to an orthopedic hospital in East London for seven months and um, made a partial recovery um, but was left with per, um, disability in my left leg. But of course, they discovered through five different lumbar punctures um, because they didn't know, you know, what it actually was which I must say for a three-year-old is quite traumatic. My mother says that she didn't realize the um, emergency of getting me vaccinated. I've subsequently learned that the Salk vaccine was declared safe in South Africa in April 1955. But living in the trans sky, you know, there wasn't a rollout of this vaccine. And um, my mother, who was quite a well-informed woman, had actually heard about what they call the Cutter Incident in um, California, where unfortunately, after the salt vaccine was used, 250 people actually contracted polio. Um, so she said she'd heard that some people were getting polio from the vaccine, and she was reluctant. Very unfortunate. <laughs> Look, unfortunately, my mother had a nervous breakdown over this. I, I suppose um, maybe a little bit of guilt. Um, the fact that she had, you know, a three-year-old and then a two-week-old. Can you imagine? Um, anyway, when I came out from the orthopedic hospital, I had to wear a caliper, you know, on the whole leg. And apparently I made such a performance every time she put it on that we threw it away. And she put chairs for me to hold on to and then moved them further away. And eventually I could walk with, without the caliper. Um, the family accepted it all. You know, I did as well. Um, I think the difficulties came mostly in the teenage years where you're trying to be like everybody else. And, you know, with this disability, yeah, life becomes pretty difficult. Oh, I would emphasize getting vaccinated with everything I've got. I mean, one child getting polio is one child too many. Um, it concerns me enormously that there's a movement at the moment not to vaccinate against anything the anti-vaxxers and what I want to say to them is that I'm an inconvenient truth. Well I discovered this recently um, because I asked a question of this wonderful man Dr Richard Bruno. Now this man is chairman of the International Post Polio Task Force. He started many Facebook groups for polio survivors because all of us discover that nobody knows about this illness. Doctors don't know. It's not even been in their courses. Um, and we're supposed to get as much information as possible and actually educate our doctors. 
because there is this condition called post polio which emerges when you're about uh, well depending on when you got it about 40 years later where suddenly you have loss of function oh you have breathing problems swallowing problems not everybody but some people have um, really a worsening of their symptoms I have experienced a suddenly a loss of function which has been quite a shock to me and then you have to be very careful of falling because you injure yourself break bones I've broken my femur and really damaged my ankle and there's nothing can be done about the ankle because um, there's arthritis in the foot so the next step is fusion of the ankle which I discover many polio uh, survivors have had to have um, so all these things you know make me just want to urge vaccination and uh, I found out that you need 80% of the population vaccinated in order for the herd immunity to kick in now with people not wanting to vaccinate anymore that herd immunity can drop and we've got a situation where there's been a re-emergence of polio in the DRC and in Kenya Nigeria has never been free and as we know there's a lot of traffic between South Africa and those countries so the threat is that if the herd immunity drops and then of course areas in South Africa that have not been immunized polio could spread to us 